Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to update the database icon, this little guy down here in the taskbar, and this little guy right there in the corner of your forms. If your database folder is moved or renamed in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Miriam in Rockford, Illinois, one of my gold members. Miriam says, I have a small database that I use for my product lists and pricing. If I give a copy of this database to anyone else, like my customers, the icon doesn't seem to work. It's not a huge deal, but I'd like them to see my icon and not the Access logo. Any ideas? Well, Miriam, if you were working with a split database on a network, for example, you just put the icon file wherever the backend database file is, and that's got to be the same for everybody. But if you're in a situation where you just have a single database that's got your products and your pricing and all that in it, and you give it on a regular basis to your customers, then yeah, if you're going to ship a logo file with it and their folder doesn't match yours exactly, then they're not going to see it. Let me demonstrate. Before we get started, though, this is a developer level tip. Developer, that little guy right there, what does that mean? That means you're going to need to know a little bit of VBA. Now, there's not a ton of VBA in this video. Uh, maybe a half a dozen lines, okay? But if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. And also, if you've never set the database title or icon before, and you want to learn how to do that, go watch this video. This is more of a beginner-level video. Okay, so here I've got my database file. It's just a copy of my tech help database, right? You've probably seen this before. Okay, and here I've got my little logo file, it's a little icon file. If you don't have an icon file, you can go find them. Just Google. There's a million sites out there that have tons of different icon files available. Now, I'm going to put these in a folder. The key here, <laughs> the key, get it? See what I did there? <laughs> I'll call this folder DB for my database. And I'm going to put both of those guys in that folder. Now, this represents your database folder, wherever that happens to be. Okay. And we're going to set this icon file as the icon for my database. So let me open this up. And we're going to go to Tool or File, Options. So I used to go into Tools, Options. Well, that was, that's, we're, we're going back like 20 years. <laughs> right? Change the title here if you want to. Here's the icon file. You're going to browse to it. It's on my desktop in my DB folder. And there it is right there. Okay. And I'm going to use this also as the form and report icon. And that will hide the access logo on my forms and reports too. It says you got to close and reopen. The, yeah, you don't. All right, but there you go. There's a little icon there, and you'll see it down on your taskbar as well. Okay, good enough. Now, here's the problem. I'm going to close that database. All right, now, if this folder moves or is renamed, you can simulate moving it or giving it to a different customer by just renaming it. Call it something else. Okay, because if you give it to them, they might not have it in C, Users, Richard, Desktop, Data, right? So their, their path's going to be different. Okay, now I just renamed this. If I open up this database now, look at that. No logo there and no logo down there. Okay. Why is that? Well, because if you go to File Options, okay, it's looking for C, Users, Amicron, Desktop, DB, whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a little function, a little subroutine technically, that's going to say, okay, when the database opens, we're going to look and see if this file exists. We're going to get the icon property from the database object and say, hey, what's your icon set to? Okay, then we're going to look to see if that file exists on the hard drive. If it doesn't, then we're going to look to see if that same file exists in the current database folder. And if it does, we're going to reset the icon property. Okay. And then a little couple extra little minor steps in there too. Now, basically, yes, the icon file will have to be kept with the database in the same folder. So if you're going to give them, I'd give them a zip file and tell them just to extract all the, all, the fol all the files in that zip file to the same folder. Okay. Okay, so how do we do all this? Well, we're going to take a trip over to my code vault and get a particular procedure that I wrote. Here's the page on my website in the code vault. This is normally reserved for gold members, but I'm letting you guys in on this special secret one. Don't tell everybody. All right. Once in a while, I open up stuff in the code vault for everybody. 
I'll put a link to this page down below in the link section in the description below the video. So you can just click on it. It'll take you right here. All right. Here's the code. We're going to click this button to copy it. That copies it to your clipboard. We're going to go drop it into our database. All right. In your database, if you don't already have a global module, make one. Right. It's just under create and then module. You can create a global module that way. But I already have one here. I'm going to open that guy up. And I'm going to paste that code right in here. Okay, this is all it is. Let me walk you through what it does. So the first thing it does is it sets a variable called DB to the current database. Okay, then it sets the icon file equal to whatever the current project path is. So that's whatever folder your database is running in or where your database is located. So it could be C colon backslash database or whatever. And then it tacks on the name of your icon file. So you got to either change this or name your icon mylogo.ico, whatever you want to do, okay? Next, it's going to look at the properties of the database and find the app icon property. That's the path and file name of whatever the icon file setting is in your database that you set earlier. You set it manually. We're going to use the dir function and say, hey, does this guy exist? All right, if this file doesn't exist, then dir returns an empty string. But now we know that whatever the icon file is set to in the database properties isn't there. So now I'm going to look and say, hey, is this icon file, is this guy, does that guy exist? In other words, is the, is the icon file in the database folder? Okay, if it is, then we're going to go ahead and set the properties. So what we have to do is set the database icon database property to the new icon file which is pointed to the new one in the database folder, right? We're going to refresh the title bar. Now it says refresh title bar, but it also refreshes the icons. The taskbar icon, the icon up top, and the taskbar. All right. If your main menu is open, you're going to have to close it and reopen it. And that's why we had to put this in a global module instead of in the code in the startup form itself, because you got to close that form and then reopen it. Otherwise, the little form icon, this guy up here, won't change. You got to close this form and then reopen it, which will cause this code to run again, but now it should find the file. Okay. How do we kick this off? Well, we put this in the main menus on load event or on open event. All right, I'll use on load because it's easier to find. And right here, we'll just say check icon file. And that'll run when the form loads up. All right, so close that. Save changes, yes. We're going to close the database down. And now remember, I renamed the folder. So when I open it at this point, it should reset the logo to that logo file. Ready? And go. And nothing happened. Why is that? Well, I made this mistake twice myself until I realized what I did. Remember the code. We got to rename this logo file or change the logo file name in the code. Right? This has to be mylogo.ico. Okay, or change it in the code. I don't care. We call that amicron.com.ic or whatever. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Now, if I run it, everybody resets. See that? Okay, the main menu loaded. It saw the icon wasn't there. That's set in the database properties. It did find it in the current database folder. So it reset the database property, refreshed the title bar, which gives you that. Okay, and then it reset this guy by closing and reopening the form. And now it doesn't matter if you rename this folder, move it, copy it, give it to someone else, right? I just make a, a complete copy of it right here. Copy. Okay. Here's the copy of it. Open the copy up, run your database and boom, it found its own icon file. Well, technically this one could find the icon file in the other folder too. So if you really want to make sure what you'd have to do is you'd have to copy this and then delete the original. Now you're absolutely sure it's not finding that file. Okay, and now if I open it up and run it, there, you can see it reset the icon file automatically. Okay, pretty cool stuff. If you like learning stuff like this, come and check out my developer courses. I've got like 60 plus hours of developer lessons on my website. I've got like a like developer one through 42 or three, I think I'm on right now. Lots and lots of stuff for you to learn. 
This is just a, a small tip. I cover all kinds of good stuff like this in my full courses. For example, in Developer 30, I cover classic VB file input and output, reading and writing text files. Lots of uses for text files. In fact, I was just reading an, arc, uh, an article on one of the financial magazines, Forbes or one of that, where they're talking about how CSV files, text files, are still the number one way that data is transferred around the web. All right, from banks and, and financial institutions. So text files aren't going anywhere, folks. And if you do any work with text files, you're going to want to learn how to read and write them manually using Access. I cover that in Developer 30, including that dir function. Gold members, I will save this database for you. You can download it off the website. There's your zip file. I'll put it up on the server. This video brings to mind another video I did a little while back called Relinking Tables. Same concept. If you've got a back end, you know, your database is split, right? And you've got back end table database files and they move or get renamed or you give this to someone else and they've got a different location for them. I got a video that shows you how to relink those tables. All right. The free tech help video shows you how to do it manually. In the extended cut for the members, I show you how with some VBA, you can automatically relink them if they move. Really cool stuff. And yes, I was also thinking it would be possible to store that icon file inside the database. As much as I hate using them, the attachment data type does have a purpose once in a while. I wouldn't use it for storing all kinds of files, but you could store like a support file or two in there, like a little tiny icon file in an attachment. And then you could extract that attachment. If the, let's say the, the database icon file isn't found from the properties, you could then extract the logo out of that attachment file, right? Which is stored in the table and then map to that. So you could do that too. I'm going to be covering, I haven't covered this yet. I'm going to be covering extracting uh, attachment files out of the database and storing them in normal folders like you should do it in an upcoming developer lesson uh, because I did have a customer, a student, who said he just inherited a database and his predecessor stored all kinds of stuff, thousands and thousands of files, resumes and all that stuff uh, in the database. And he wants to get them out of there, but to do it by hand would probably take a year. And I'm going to show him how to do it with just a couple clicks. So. That is your fast tip for today. I know it's not quite so fast because I rambled on for a little bit, but sometimes I do that. You just have to put up with me. <laughs> well, I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to, I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, 
Check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.